insulin's job is to put away the groceries. Now with this kind of job description, one would expect insulin to only be out and about during the day when eating happens. And in healthy folks, this is pretty much the story. Insulin levels quickly rise in response to the arrival of a meal. Both the presence of sugars and amino acids spark a flurry of activity in the pancreas. The insulin that is released quickly gets to work, moving nutrients out of the blood and into tissues. Once all the sugar has been taken care of and the sugar levels are back in range, the cells responsible for insulin production can take a break until the next feeding session. Now, when you're insulin resistant, the pancreas seems to be a little bit slow off the mark when you eat something yummy. Unfortunately, this delay can mean that the sugar levels rise a little higher than ideal. But when all is said and done, the sugar is handled. We admonish the pancreas for being slow. But what is not always appreciated is one of the reasons for the dilly-dallying is the beta cells are taking serious strain. They're being expected to produce insulin 24-7 instead of insulin levels ebbing and flowing across the day and flatlining overnight in the metabolically challenged Insulin levels are high morning, noon, and night. People who are insulin resistant wake up with high levels of insulin despite not having eaten for hours. The high insulin levels are not just stressful for beta cells. Pretty much every body part suffers. The lucky ones manage to resist insulin. Now, among the most vulnerable body parts are blood vessels, since they are bearing the full brunt of the egomaniac whose mission it is, is to put away the groceries. The end result, it's not healthful for anyone. Doctors call it metabolic syndrome. It's the bad body chemistry behind heart attacks, diabetes, and many cancers. Aish. Ironically, the way they often treat it is to demand beta cells work harder. So, what is keeping beta cells awake at night? This is the big question. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we explore who is keeping the beta cells up all night and how they're doing it. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, maybe the first response to this question is, well, it's the elevated glucose levels that are the problem. But truth be told, it takes years of beta cell abuse to get to the point where they fail to deliver enough insulin to keep the sugar level in range. Something else, or someone else, is keeping beta cells awake all night. A team of researchers based in Tucson, Arizona, had a hunch the someone was the liver. Now, what clued them into this was the fact that the easiest way to stop excess insulin production is to disconnect the liver from the parasympathetic network. The procedure is called a hepatic vagotomy. The nerve that is snipped is the afferent nerve. This stops the liver from being able to send reports to the brain. But despite the missing data, the brain's ability to run the show is more or less intact. More or less. Less insulin is produced overnight, and there are no sugar spikes to worry about. This can be seen in these oral glucose tolerance tests. The red line is the control. The black line had the SNP. The sugar high is not significantly different, but the fasting insulin level is significantly lower. Now, before you book yourself for a hepatic vagotomy, be warned, it's not a perfect solution. Mice fed a high-fat diet become immune to the bad diet. They don't pack on the pounds or develop metabolic complications. On the flip side, skinny mice become insulin resistant. It's a networking effect. Stimulating this nerve 
prompts the liver to produce something that increases glucose uptake in the muscle. So when it's missing, trouble happens. Our team wanted to know why. Severing the nerve resulted in less insulin being secreted despite an obesogenic diet. Now they theorized that if they could put the pieces of the puzzle together, they could solve the hyperinsulinemia problem and reap some of the reward. But at first glance, this decrease in insulin secretion didn't make sense. Studies have shown nerve firing dampens down insulin secretion. Conversely, only when the nerve is not firing is insulin secretion amplified. Aish, biology is complicated. Now there's two possible explanations for the more insulin secretion associated with obesity. The liver is either firing up the nerve by sending excitatory chemicals its way, or it's interfering with the signal that should dampen down the response. Now using slices of liver from obese animals, the team pinpointed the signal. Fat livers were deliberately dampening down the nerve's responses by releasing GABA, the quintessential inhibitory neurotransmitter. The releasing of GABA was not entirely voluntary. It was leaking out. Using a combination of mutant mice and pharmacology, our team pieced together the why and how fatty livers were driving beta cells crazy. They discovered that the liver cells are full of positive ions. Now in biological speak, the liver cells membranes are depolarized. The reason for this unfortunate situation is despite being full of fat, that is fuel, the hepatocytes are still short of energy. This energy shortage forces them to cut back on some energy-intensive processes, such as pumping sodium out via the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. It's this that creates the positivity problem. It also contributes to there being a little more GABA than usual, thanks to a thing called the GABA shunt. Since GABA is ordinarily transported by iron-dependent transporters, the enhanced positivity sees more GABA moving out of the cells. Now, once it is out of the cells, it's able to hook up to GABA-A receptors on the hepatic afferent nerve, where it does what GABA does. It inhibits, and nerve firing slows. Insulin secretion then increases effectively cancelling beta cells tea breaks. So, is GABA the bad guy? Mm, only on paper. GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter. 60 to 75% of all synapses in the brain are GABAergic, and the pancreas has its own GABAergic system in place, which keeps beta cells happy and healthy. So the option to exploit this biology is more than likely a fantasy, but the research team are committed to give it a go. The trouble is stopping the production of a tiny amount of GABA, which is being produced locally, deep inside the liver, will potentially have a lot of negative consequences because GABA is essential. But all is not lost. Our team found that the GABA levels track fat levels. Since fatty liver goes hand in hand with metabolic syndrome, in fact, it's typically seen as a consequence, but this research suggests it might be a contributor to the problem and what needs to be fixed. To fix it, there are multiple strategies that you could use. One that might not be on your radar is to facilitate assembly of the VLDL particles. This can be done by ensuring that the liver cells have an adequate supply of bubble wrap. More choline will help you create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Sign up for a one-on-one -on -one health conversation or browse our library. 
the advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who has metabolic syndrome? Share this video with them so they understand what the real problem is and can take steps to address it. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.